Greetings my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy and welcome back to another retro recipe test where I test old fashioned retro recipes. Today I'm going to be making a tomato soup cake. A cake made with a can of tomato soup. So many of you have requested this through the years but today I'm going to make it because of this book. This is Cook's Tour by the Atsugi All Wives Naval Air Station in Atsugi, Japan. And this was sent to me by Connie. Connie, thank you so much for sending this to me. Her mother, Mara, was the editor of this book. This book was published in 1955 to 1958, and it was because her father was stationed at a Naval Air Force Base in Japan. So her mother and a bunch of other women compiled this book of recipes. It's a piece of history in itself. This was printed in Tokyo, and there's Mara. That's that's Connie's mom. That's so great. There's all kinds of recipes in here. Melon ball cocktail, Swiss egg, sweet rolls. Here is the tomato soup cake. So the original author of this recipe is Yvonne Corsini, and this is a perfect recipe for rationing because it also contains no milk or no eggs like it says here. Look, ma, no milk, no eggs. And in classic retro style, this does not really have any instructions. It just lists the ingredients. So I'm going to be kind of winging it based on my previous experience making a cake, but it looks pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and do this. So first we're gonna sift all of our dry ingredients. Two cups of flour. Okay, my measuring cup is a little bit wide for this. Um, I should turn my phone off. Doo -doo -doo. Oh boy, I'm getting flour all over the place. Two. Thank you. One teaspoon of baking soda and two teaspoons of baking powder. Boop. One. I did make a recipe a while back using ketchup, and I think this is going to be similar. It's going to be a spice cake with tomato soup in it. <laughs> I love the ingenuity and the creativity in some of these retro recipes. I think it's just, just great. Now we're going to season this with one teaspoon of cinnamon, boop, half teaspoon of cloves, and one teaspoon of nutmeg. Sift that all together. The last time I used shortening, I incorrectly presumed that one stick was a half a cup, just like it is with butter. It is not, as some of you pointed out. This is actually one cup of shortening. So I'm going to use half of this since I only need a half a cup. <laughs> what recipe was that for? The recipe seemed to turn out fine. What was it? Now I can't remember because I'm senile. Oh yeah, that was for my Crisco salad recipe. One cup of sugar. Half and another half. One can of tomato soup. This is Campbell's condensed soup, right into the bowl. <laughs> it actually smells like Chef Boyardee, canned kind of sweet tomato soup. One can of that, right into the bowl here. And then one cup of raisins. Boop. Okay, that's it. We're just gonna mix this all up. Here we go. Wow, it's pretty thick. I'm just gonna use a spatula to mix this in. This is a pretty thick batter here. Now I've got a bun pan and I'm gonna spray it with some baking spray. That was the lid. I like using the kind that has a little bit of flour in it. So spray this well, hold your breath. Now when using a bun pan, I find that it's really important to make sure you spray the central column so that it releases nicely. I'm gonna just dollop this in here. I can smell the tomato in it. It's kinda nuts. And smooth it out a bit. So the recipe also does not say what kind of pan to bake this in. So I just thought a bun pan would look nice, but now that I'm looking at the volume of this, it might be a little bit small. 
we shall see. <laughs> now I'm gonna go pop this into a preheated 350 degree oven and it says to cook it for an hour, but because I'm using a bund pan and I've distributed this kind of thinly, it might take less time. So I'm gonna use a toothpick and when it comes out clean, my cake will be done and then I'm gonna allow it to cool before I taste it. Okay, see you in a little bit. <laughs> Alrighty, my lovelies, I am back, and here is the tomato soup cake. It looks beautiful. So it baked in the bundt pan for about 30 minutes. I let it cool for about a half an hour before I turned it out, and it came out beautifully. It rose more than I thought it would, and it looks great. The recipe originally says that it should take an hour to bake, but if you cook it in a bundt pan, it cooks a lot faster. So I'm gonna take these little pieces of wax paper and tuck them underneath the cake. And that will keep the powdered sugar off the cake stand. Okay, here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, I love it. So cute. Powdered sugar, cocoa powder. Yeah. So festive. Now we can just pull these little pieces of paper out and our stand is nice and clean. Alrighty, so it's the moment of truth. Let's give the tomato soup cake a taste. I have to say, I don't smell any tomato, but will it taste like tomato? Let's see. Look at that, it's a beautiful color. It's orange, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It's great. It tastes like a spice cake. I don't taste any tomato soup whatsoever. Mm -mm. Very pronounced clove and nutmeg cinnamon flavors. Tastes like Christmas time. The level of sweetness is perfect. It's about as sweet as say a banana bread sweet but not like super sweet the texture is of a cake just like any ordinary kind of box cake which works if you'd like to make this a little bit more decadent or a little bit sweeter you could put like a cream cheese frosting on top of this it reminds me a lot of carrot cake it's that same kind of flavor of cinnamon and spice and the color is also reminiscent of carrot cake you know how carrot cake has that nice kind of orange color to it although it doesn't have the same texture Carrot cake has sometimes a little bit of tooth to it because you've got the shredded carrot. This does not have that, but it does have a little bite of the raisins in there, which I actually quite like. I think spice and raisins, particularly cinnamon and raisin, classic combination. So it actually works for me, even though I'm not a huge raisin fan, but here it actually works really well. You just need a cup of tea now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Now remember, this recipe uses no milk, no butter, and no eggs. It's a great historical example of rationing and ingenuity. Big thanks again to Connie and Mara for sharing this recipe with me, and thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. <laughs>